Hi, this is Charlene here with the five phases of AVID's focus note taking. And so I'm going to go ahead and start this slideshow. So we're really going to focus on the five phases of focus note taking for educators. So when we talk to educators, we always want them to start with phase five and really reflect on how will students use these notes to complete a more rigorous task. It's very important for teachers to have this reflection moment because if the notes are going to be simply taken just for the sake of note taking, then we advise teachers to use a graphic organizer to use another form of note taking. Notes are specific to complete a more rigorous task. And when we're talking about that, we're spe specifically indicating homework, some type of independent work. Um, you know, how will students use this to participate in a Socratic seminar, complete a writing prompt, or a constructed response? We really want students to apply notes to a more ri rigorous task. So what notes are needed to complete the, the next task? So we're going to look at phase one and phase one is taking the notes as a teacher I need to reflect how should I take these notes should they be done in a two column note a three column note should they be done in uh, a one pager um, you know what can I use in order to get my point across so if I'm doing Eureka's read draw write model I could possibly use a three column note if I am in wonders and I'm looking at two characters and I want to compare and contrast those two characters definitely a two column note or t chart would be best so just uh, understanding that and selecting the note taking format wisely so first we want to take the notes. Teachers will model this note taking process as we set up our notes and, and really pay attention to the format of the notes. Um, here are just some of the note taking uh, strategies. You can do Cornell notes, a two or three column note, a mind map, an input output page in interactive notebooks and definitely graphic organizers for this phase one. So we want students to take notes. As students are taking notes, teachers can model this strategy under the document camera um, by demonstrating how notes are taken. We do want scaffolding and that gradual release of responsibility where students will eventually be taking notes and uh, it'll be less teacher structured and less teacher input, more student centered. Then we're going to move on to phase two, processing the notes. So you want students to think about the notes. The important part of note taking is having these multiple interactions with the content in order for students to understand the content and retain information. So we do want them to go ahead and go back to the notes. Um, they can highlight, underline, add, delete, really just organize their notes for their own thought process so that they can make as many connections as possible. Um, one thing that is common is that a image is worth a thousand words. Having students go back and add images to their note taking so that that image be the product of that, of that information and that'll help them retain the information and gather it back later on. So here are some specific ways to uh, do phase two, which is processing the notes. Students can underline, highlight, circle, ask questions in the margins, add information or delete it, classify, organize, or chunk information, look for main ideas, and less important details. These are some notes for revision that students can definitely use, um, circling keywords, highlighting main ideas, uh, using an asterisk to identify an important key concept or term, um, filling in the gaps by using this little icon, um, chunking sections by separating notes. So if we were talking about notes for various um, eras of history and really just separating that by drawing a line to show division, um, adding information by putting in thought bubbles or using post-it notes, numbering notes and uh, new concepts, crossing out incorrect information, um, whatever they don't understand, they can use a question mark, 
call that their point of confusion. We really know that this is something they're struggling with and they may need to work with a partner to clarify some ideas. Putting a box around formulas or answers. If they understand some new information, using that exclamation point to show that this is my aha moment. This is where I really get it. This is where it all makes sense to me. And then writing questions and summaries after all of the revisions. So you can write questions in the margins and summary at the end of your note taking. And that would be phase two. Phase three is really connecting beyond the notes. How can I analyze this notes um, using inquiry and connections to deepen uh, the content knowledge by asking questions? So a good phase for phase three is what do I notice and what do I wonder? What do I notice? What strategies, what connections can I make to myself, to other text connections, to the real world? And what do I wonder? What do I still not understand? Or what can I research further? So these are just some ways to make connections beyond the notes, asking questions about the notes and adding original thinking. Um, and so wonderment questions, what do I comprehend? What predictions can I make? Um, and then what applications, what planning and strategy, and then really using that cost as levels of thinking and questioning. As educators, we frequently ask questions, but we do want to empower our students to ask questions. And then what connections can they make? Um, what do they already know? What prior knowledge do they have? What content or course is this from? And uh, what out, what connections can I make outside of this course? There are real world and real life around them and the purpose for them taking the notes. So that would be phase three. They would review the notes and really ask, what do I wonder and what do I notice? Phase four, uh, they would be applying either a summary or reflection. We don't ask them to do both. They're either summarizing the content or reflecting on the note taking process and creating some action steps where they will continue to use these notes uh, in order to achieve the, the goal that is intended. So uh, they would summarize on the content or reflect on their learning. And so we want them to reflect on the learning or summarize the content one or the other, but not both. So some ways, uh, think about the notes as a whole, and then they could either summarize what they learned, capture the most important aspects of their notes and in order to answer the essential question, or reflect how will these notes be useful. Consider how um, using these notes and taking these notes helps their learning and maybe meets their note taking objective or their content objective. And then phase five, you're really gonna allow the students the opportunity to now use the notes. So it, it has to come full circle. St teachers start with phase five in the planning phase, but then they have to uh, allow students to apply the notes to something more rigorous. So students use the notes to complete a more rigorous task and teacher reflects on and determines next steps for focus note taking. So this is just um, some notes, the way that they may look. Um, these were for two totally different aspects. One was uh, like what connections can we make to uh, the star note taking practice practices and the previous note taking. And then the other one was how can I evaluate notes as an educator to make sure that students have ownership, that they're using their, their ideas, that they give examples and really where are students in our notes. So you can see even though this is basically the same document, it was taken for two different purposes. Therefore my notes are addressing two different concepts. So we wanna make sure that we apply the learning. We use the notes for their intended purpose and demonstrate what you've learned and apply it to a new situation. And these are just some ways that students can apply notes. Socratic seminars, philosophical chairs, debates, problem solving, researching, writing, narratives, arguments, essays, reports, presentations, proposals, speeches, teaching other students, panel discussions, project-based learning, quizzes, tests, studying, letters, articles, scripts, documentaries, uh, review, critiques, experiments, blogs, dissertations, and conclusions. So there's a whole bunch of ways that students can apply notes. When we're talking about notes, that's probably a DOK one or two. When students are applying notes and we're moving into that DOK three and four, where we really want our students to learn and maintain uh, the information that they're getting. 
So this is the one pager on the five phases of focused note taking. So you can see phase one is really setting up and taking the notes with adding to the notes. Phase three is reviewing the notes and asking questions. And phase four is either reflecting or summarizing. And then phase five, ultimately students will apply the notes. If we are scaling back and we are only um, minimalizing the phases of focus note taking for this year since we're returning from distance learning, I would definitely say that teachers need to figure out how students will apply the notes, set up the notes, take the notes and allow students opportunities to add to the notes and then allow them to apply their notes. So if we don't do all five phases, I would definitely say teachers need from a planning lens to look at phase five, how will these notes be used? Phase one, modeling and demonstrating how to set them up and take notes, allowing students to add their own, their own thoughts and then going ahead and allowing them to apply their notes to a more rigorous task. And for this year, I would say phase three and four would be optional or phase three and four would be um, students who uh, have mastered the other phases. For example, if I've had a seventh grader and they've been taking notes for, you know, up till fifth or sixth grade and they feel very comfortable taking their notes, absolutely allow them to complete phases three and four if they feel comfortable. But if we are scaffolding and scaling back, definitely start with phase five, allow students to do phase one and two, and then apply the notes to a more rigorous task. And that is just a modification that we can make for this year as we're reintroducing focused note taking in in-person learning. So this is Charlene with AVID's Five Phases of Focus Note Taking. Feel free to reach out to me via email if you have any questions or would like any follow-up. And once again, this is AVID's Five Phases of Focus Note Taking. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.